Bless up, bless up. It's your boy Change Agent Cooper coming to you live from Asheville, North Keep Carolina. Up. Hashtag 828 is great. Hashtag Appalachia Strong. Hashtag Reform Reentry. Hashtag Operation Gateway. Change Agent Cooper. Like this channel. Subscribe to this channel. Click the bell for notifications. I got a lot to say and I'm going to say it. I have a lot of experience, strength, and hope and I'm going to share it. For me not to would be blasphemy. Now, Siri, you need to quit talking so loud. You see I'm shooting a video. Um, so anyway, about social determinants of health. You hear a lot of people using this lingo and it can go over a person's head. You know, uh, here lately, you know, certain vernacular can be used to help get grants, those bu buzzwords and stuff. Well, I'm here as a community health worker to make sure that the people understand the lingo that's being used and understand how to use the lingo and provide practical, practical uh, 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 pieces to the conversation. You dig what I'm saying? And so, you know, U.S. healthy people, they did a survey um, talking about social determinants of health. I want to say the NC healthy, uh, the healthy NC, North Carolina Highway, hush, healthy NC 2030 report. Talk about social determinants. You know, social determinants of health is sexy conversation these days. And I want to make sure I give y'all clear examples of it. You dig what I'm saying? Especially as it relates to reentry, baby. So let's talk about it. I was on the phone with a client had reached out. This is a lady. She, she's been out of prison for less than two months. You know, she hit me up. Somebody had said hit me up. You know, I could help her out. You know, she's trying to get her driver's license restored and she's trying to get a job, you know, that she can get to from the house that she's at and salute the people who have the house because this house, this isn't a regular halfway house. This is like a house that was created by some good, big hearted Western North Carolinians who are, who are blessing the women getting out of prison. And I salute them for that and just the structure that they have in place at that house. But when I'm on the phone with that lady, you know me, I'm people first, I'm talent first, economics mindset, shout out uh, Institute for Emerging Issues. So when I'm thinking of talent first, I'm always looking at those social drivers that can impact the health of the individual, those social drivers that can impact job retention of the individual. And so when I'm talking to her, I'm hearing her talking about what kind of job she want to do and she's very humble this that and the third so i start loading her loading her up with information about resources now remember this video is talking about social determinants of health with the emphasis on the social and community context i want to make sure i give y'all clear examples of social determinants that impact the health of a person so that y'all understand when people are talking about it in these in the rooms when you're in the rooms with the big wigs or the wannabe big wigs when you're in the room you understand what they're talking about and you can give them a clear example about what you're doing because many of us was doing work to address social determinants of health before we knew the lingo and i want to make sure the people that's been doing the work know how to hold their own when they get in the rooms with them people who be trying to talk all over our head that's neither here nor there and I did just get fired up. But let me say this. We're talking about social and community context. So I'm on the phone with her. <laughs> I start talking to her about um, other halfway houses in the area. Their voices at Afrolatia can cover the cost to get her into another halfway house. We could pay four to six weeks depending upon the cost. We start talking about all these job opportunities and these employer partners that we have. You know, this lady was kind of down on herself thinking because she got a charge, a certain charge that she couldn't get a job and she had to settle for this, had to settle for that. And I started loading her up with information. You know, years and years ago, she used to be in the healthcare. You know what I'm saying? And she was thinking that was over for her forever because of her charges. I told her, listen, sis, nah, nah, nah. I got two, two R I done served over the years that's this that's formerly incarcerated this that's working as RNs now I don't share their story because you know the RN profession you know a lot of times they still want to keep it kind of on the low so I don't share their stories like that but just know you know I, I tell people that like you know it's not over I got people that work in healthcare right now you dig what I'm saying and so I'm talking to her about all these opportunities and I told her like if you move closer to the town, you know, you could get to the recovery meetings some more too. You know, you could have, it would be easier for you to get to the recovery meetings. You got more resources and, and more job uh, opportunities. This and the third. And what she said to me, what she said to me is what led to me making this video. She said, man, that sounds great. And I really do appreciate you. I've heard a lot of good things about you. Yada, yada, yada. She said, uh, but I, I'm not sure if I want to leave this house you know, in this house, man, it's, it's just a good vibe here. You know, with some good women in here, you know, and, and, and they got a lot of sobriety and, and, and they're serious about life and goals. And, and this is where I need to be. She say, I'll settle for, you know, whatever job you can get me to that's, that I can get to from here. But um, I really don't want to leave this house because this is a group, group of women. 
That's what led me to doing this video. So when you start thinking about social determinants, social drivers that impact the health, you got to look at the social and community context. When a person is coming back home from incarceration, they have to get plugged into a new community. A lot of times the people that go to prison, they didn't have no, no solid connections. You dig what I'm saying? They had some people, I ain't going to say the people wasn't solid, but they might not have been the positive vibes. They may have been the people that was living that criminogenic lifestyle. You dig? With faulty core beliefs. You dig? Those people that was living a life of destruction you dig so when they get out of prison they got to reinvent what 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 it looks like what they support network looks like you dig because people need accountability accountability is what helps us change you feel me and everybody need us it needs support there's there's no or as some of my jamaican friends say no man is an island man you know what i'm saying oh well man you know what i'm saying like for real for real so when she said that to me and she said like you know this is a good group i don't want to leave you know this is what i need that is what empowered me to talk about the social and community context. So when you're looking at an individual that's coming home from prison, whether it's a client of yours, whether it's a family member of yours, you need to keep in your head that getting a job is a part of it. Continuity of health care is a part of it. Yeah, getting your driver's license back is a part of it. But you have to be plugged into a community of people who will hold you accountable, keep you uplifted, motivated, inspired, because this world will throw you a curveball that you ain't ready for. And you got to have some people that you can turn to, that you can lean on, that will empower you in those moments that you feel powerless and hopeless i've been there i seen some of the best of them i done seen some of the best of them get out of prison get the big headed start living like they on the island and isolated and they mess around and, and relapse on their behaviors or relapse on the substance that they was using that leads them back to all the behaviors you dig what i'm saying so yes we must be intentional about making sure that the community is is available for this individual that's returning and what are some communities i'll say this and i'll shut up there are some communities you got the recovery community you got the faith community operation gateway is soon to start a, a, a support group that's for formerly incarcerated people you know what i'm saying we're gonna start that up and get that back up and running i had it running when i was working at the community college it was called asap always spiritual always personal and we used to always have anywhere from seven seven to twelve people come to the group just checking in talking about life talking about struggles you know what i'm saying because community matters you dig what i'm saying and so just remember that for y'all people that's watching this video you when they start talking about social determinants of health don't let it go over your head you got to dig in and we end up being the experts lived expertise you dig because at the end of the day a lot of us been doing the work we've been doing the work it's just time for us to understand what they talk about and understand they lingo and then we can pop off you feel me we can pop off when we come in the room and break that thing down for them let them know what need to be funded because at the end of the day if we talk about addressing inequities we got to be talking about investments can i get a amen and we want to be the people that's in the room able to give them the content and give them the experience strength and hope so that they know what to fund because if we ain't in the room you got people in there talking about a people that and what the people need that ain't connected with the people how you gonna speak for a people that you ain't connected to at the end of the day that's oppressive thoughts you dig what i'm saying if we build it they will come that ain't never worked for the people it ain't no if we build it they will come you got to build it and then go to the people and make sure they know what you just built and then hold their hand through the process so that they understand it is safe what you just built that's what us community health workers do trust it trusted community leaders that serve as a link liaison or intermediary between the people and the resources you dig what i'm saying dispelling myths Dispelling myths, slaying stigma. Lived experience matters. Lived, ex lived expertise, you heard me? <laughs> That's how they say it in New Orleans. You heard me? Do they got community health workers in New Orleans? I want to meet some of them. Be, oh, that'll be nice. I love how people from NO talk. You heard me? Well, yeah, that's enough randomness at the end of my video. But if you, if this makes sense to you, man, follow the channel. I'm going to continue to put this content out. If you're a community health worker, I salute you for the work that you're doing, going out in the community to, to, to contribute to health equity. I salute you. Much love and respect. May God bless you. May God keep you. That indeed is my prayer. My name is Change Agent Cooper. I'm not the answer, but I'm for a damn short alternative. Bless up.